In this lesson, we're going to go over a series of personal finance functions. So let's go ahead and start off with some of the basic ones. Let's just say you wanted to figure out your net worth. Well, when you're looking at your net worth, you're thinking about your assets, all of the things you own, like a checking account, maybe your car value, your stocks, etc. And this is going to be one number. And you also have your liability, which is going to subtract from this number. So it's a very easy formula, which is going to be equal sign this minus this number. And then finally, you see my net worth is 21,500. Now, if you go over here to another one, we have this savings growth. Let's say we have a bank account and we're putting into the bank account $300 per month at an annual interest rate of 5% over 60 months. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this FV function, also known as future value. So I'm going to do equal sign FV. And you're going to see here it's going to break it down for me for rate, number of periods, as well as payment. So I'm going to start off here with the rate. And now because this is the annual interest rate, I have to divide that by 12. So I know what I'm going to be getting every month because it's going to multiply by this number, the months. So I'm going to go ahead now and do a comma and it's going to be number of periods. And it's going to be over 60 months, comma, and then my payment is going to be out $300. Notice how it's negative. I close that out and you're going to see here after 60 months, I'm going to have $20,400. Let's go over here to this budget tracker. Now let's just say I have exported a bunch of data from my credit card company and I'd like to know what I'm spending per category. So what I'm going to do is use a sum if function. So very simply, I'm just going to type out sum if, and then notice here it's asking me for the range and the criteria. Well, I'm looking for my utilities. So I have to tell it where utilities live. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all my data right inside of here and then type out a comma to get to my next argument, which is going to be the criteria, which is going to be utilities. So very simply, I'm going to go ahead and just click on utilities, or I could have just typed that out in quotes. And then finally, my sum range, which is going to be this number amount. So what this is going to do is going to extract out utilities and find its respective number and then add them up. So let's go ahead now and highlight everything there inside of the amount. And I close that out and you're going to see that I'm spending about $2,900 in utilities. But now there's a chance that because some of these categories may also categorize as a different type here, meaning that one of these categories may also be an expense and an income, I need to make sure that they're isolated to just be an expense. So now what I'm going to do is a sum ifs, which is plural, indicating that it's going to be multiple criteria. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to do sum ifs this time with an S at the end. And notice how it starts off with my sum range this time, meaning the numbers. So let's go ahead and highlight all my numbers, come back up to my formula, do a comma, and then my criteria range is next. Essentially what I did before, which is going to be highlight all my categories, come back to my formula once again, comma, and then what is my criteria? Again, it's going to be utilities, but this time let's go ahead and type it out. So open quotes, I'm going to type out utilities, close out my quotes, and then I'm in my next criteria. And this time it's going to be the type, and this type is going to be expense. Again, I'm isolating it to make sure it's going to be very specific to that. So I'll go ahead and highlight all my content there, tap on the comma, and then in quotes, I'm going to say expense. Close it out, and then close out my whole formula. And you can see the number is slightly lower because again, they overlap. So you're going to want to repeat that for the rest of these. And now finally, let's go ahead and do the loan calculator. So in this case, I want to know what my monthly payment's going to be for a loan of $20,000. And notice I have an annual interest rate of 6% over the span of five years. So I'm going to now use the PMT function. So PMT, and then notice I have my rate. So my rate is going to be this 6%, and it's going to be divided by 12 because we are looking at an annual interest rate and we need to divide it by how many months there are, type in a comma, and my number of periods is going to be this five, but this is going to be multiplied by 12 because we wanna show 60 months because it is my monthly payment I'm trying to get to. And then comma, we're gonna see here is my present value and that is going to be this 20,000. So I close it out. And we're going to see here that I'm going to have a monthly payment of all this, which is going to include my interest rate. 
So all of these formulas can be really handy for personal finance, whether we're talking about just our net worth, if we're saving, if we want to take a look at how much we're spending on certain categories, as well as looking at monthly loan calculators. So go ahead and try that out with this data or your own, and we'll see you in future lessons. Thanks, everyone. Are you happy with this training? Make sure to subscribe for more great content. Visit the Simon Says It channel, explore our videos and training sessions, and decide what you want to learn next.